You know, after a long season of doing Leaf videos, I said I wanted to talk about actual winning teams. This isn't exactly what I had in mind. And the team they were playing was them. Who am I even supposed to cheer for or against? I mean, a couple months before the playoffs, I thought these guys had a good a chance of making the playoffs as these guys. But you know what? It ended up being a really good series. So come with me. Let's sit down and talk about it. After after you. After, it's a Canadian standoff. Well, this series started off slowly, eh? Started off with a bang! Actually, more like it started with a slash, you see, because, you see. Mark Stone in front of the net gets slashed by P.K. Subban. Stone hurt Subban out of the game. And if you're a Habs fan right now, you're going, yes, Stone hurt. I seem to recall Subban having a few other words for that as well. And obviously we didn't think it at the time, but in a funny way, if you look back, Habs fans, you gotta be happy that that happened in game one, and it happened in Montreal. It really set the tone in that it created this rallying cry for Montreal. If this happened in Ottawa, maybe it wouldn't be the same, but you got 19, 20,000 fans yelling and screaming that it was a bad call. And fans of the Canadians were behind the Canadians heading into the game. Imagine how much more they were behind the team after that call. Of course, the rub to that is you lose one of the greatest defenders in the world. But luckily for Montreal, they worked hard. They were able to solve Andrew Hammond a few times, and they win the game. In fact, if I had any criticism of this series at all, it would just be the pacing. And this seems to happen in Montreal on occasion. And they can't help it. It's just because there's energy to them. But they have this habit of, whoa, starting off crazy fast and then kind of dying. Look at the Boston Bruins series. In 2011, the Habs go up 2-0 and end up losing the series. Then again, Montreal wasn't the only team. Team Boston did that too that year. Mm -hmm. Then the Ottawa series a couple years ago was insanity. And I'll tell you what I love about watching Montreal in the playoffs and why I think Ottawa complements it beautifully. I always want Montreal in an all-Canadian matchup in the playoffs, preferably first round. One thing Montreal fans and media are really good at setting up is heroes and villains. And yeah, when you're covering sports, you want to have some journalistic integrity, but at the end of the day, there is a little bit of theater to it as well. We saw it a couple years ago, Griba right into Lars Eller. That was your hero villain scenario then. This time it was set up in game one. And there were so many ways to interpret what was going on, it made my head spin. The ref made the right call because it was a slash and it caused an injury. Oh, but he was faking that injury. He's a faker. Well, if it happened in Montreal, you wouldn't be saying that. Are you saying it's gonna happen in Montreal? No, no, I didn't. But the Senators coach did. And through the first two games, ah, just all this crazy drama building up to it. And then of course, Ottawa Senators fans have gotta be happy that playoff hockey is back in their building, so game three is never slow. Gets a little more somber, obviously deservedly so because of Mark Reeds and that storyline. But that aside, it just seemed that after game three, the momentum of the series just stopped. It's almost like both teams, both fan bases were already spent. Before the first few games, everyone was just Ugh, energy drinks all the time. Just let's do this. I'm taking out everybody. And the energy drinks start to wear off a little bit, but you're, but you're still hype like, yeah, all right, let's, yeah. And then finally you go to your friends like, I, I don't know, man, I, I think I'm kind of ready to go home. But the Sens weren't ready to go home, were they? And it was a heroic effort that almost succeeded in forcing a game seven. And even Habs fans, you have to admit, it's kind of good that the Sens weren't swept. Story-wise, I mean, with the Hamburglar and the crazy comeback and the emergence of Mark Stone, who I, I, I totally understand you're not terribly fond of at this very moment, but watching the Senators rise from the Connor McDavid sweepstakes to holy crap, they're in the playoffs, was amazing to watch. Yep, it was amazing, and uh, we're not, we're not going to talk about anything that, that, that could ruin it. Uh... Ah, screw it. We might as well talk about that blown call, eh? Game six, Price never had the puck. And the Twitter conversation was amazing after that. Because everyone was saying, well, the ref technically did the right thing. He couldn't see it, so he made the call to blow the whistle. And it was mentioned on the broadcast that, well, they want to prevent Carey Price from getting slashed. They want to prevent some of the shenanigans that go on after whistles, all the scrums and face washes. So there's going to be a few quick whistles. So I'll even go as far to say I don't blame the ref for that call. But at the end of the day, Puck was kind of loose there, bud. But, but you can't get hung up on that too much because let's pretend they were completely screwed and that goal should have counted. It only would have tied the game up. Habs could still win that game. I don't like getting into woulda, shoulda, couldas because it's just layers of problems and I don't like getting yelled at. I like doing the yelling. And Habs, before I get to you, Ottawa Senators fans. Uh, geez, from a Leaf fan. Bravo. What a great season. Sorry, wait. What, what a great February 18th onward. Imagine how good Ottawa would be if they could get a goalie to play like Andrew Hammond in the regular season and Craig Anderson in the playoffs. And the other interesting part is, what does Ottawa do with their goaltending situation? You know, one of the things they saw being talked about, Ottawa could get free agent goalie Matt O'Connor. 
Well, then they get Craig Anderson, who is due for a raise in salary next season, Robin Leonard, who is due for a raise in salary next season, and Andrew Hammond, who is due for a raise in salary cap and salary next season if the Sens choose to keep him. I'm going to go with someone's on their way out. But aside from that, you have so much to be happy about. Eric Carlson has emerged to be an even better leader than I thought he was. Mark Stone has emerged to be an even better prospect than I thought he was. Mika Zibanejad, fantastic. Uh, uh, Hoffman, such a good young team. I mean, they'd probably look better with McDavid, but hey, who wouldn't, am I right? I won't bring up the fact that you totally screwed yourself out of the McDavid sweepstakes, don't worry. And now, the Montreal Canadiens, after all that craziness that I was talking about, after the crash in energy, will they be able to get it back? for round two. And it'll be interesting because the Habs are so involved in voodoo, wizardry, and BS for against them all the time. And their opponent next round is either going to be Detroit or Tampa Bay, and that series is just full of flying, flailing voodoo, wizardry, and BS. Peter Mrazek. Their series is full of Peter Mrazek. Mrazek versus Carey Price. I like that goalie duel. And then if you get the lightning, you get that whole narrative of, well, we got Ben Bishop instead of Anders Lindback. We'll beat you this time around. I don't know what's in the store. All I know is we have at least one more round of the entertaining traveling carnival that is the Montreal Canadiens. Hate them as a Leaf fan, love them as a hockey fan. So a few questions. Do you think Ottawa got jobbed in game six? And do you think they have what it takes to win in the playoffs next year? Will they even make the playoffs next year? And do the Montreal Canadiens have a few more energy drinks left in them? So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all of your friends. And I, I think I'm going to have a couple energy drinks myself.